So now we're on the fourth slide and we're taking a look at example number four. Find the general solution to the differential equation y prime is equal to x squared times y plus one. Let's remind ourselves of our key concept. Get the y's with dy and the x's with dx. Well, interestingly enough, we don't even have a dy or a dx. That's because this problem is presented with y prime notation. So let's start by rewriting the initial problem, but using dy dx instead of y prime. Okay, in my next step, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to keep my key concept in mind, which is to get all the y's with dy and all the x's with dx. To do this, I'm going to need to divide both sides by y plus 1. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. Now on the left side, we have a situation with a fraction, and the numerator of that fraction is the derivative of the denominator. So this is going to be a natural log situation. The ln, now typically would be the absolute value of the denominator, but for this problem, we already discussed in the last slide that the absolute value won't be necessary. So we're going to say the natural log of y plus 1 is equal to 1 third x cubed plus c. And I'm going to come up top where there's a little bit more space. The implied base when dealing with natural log is e. And now I'm going to do this highly technical maneuver called a schwing where I start here and I say e to this whole power is equal to this whole thing. So e to the 1 third x cubed plus c is equal to y plus 1. I'm going to flip flop the right and left hand sides. I just feel more comfortable when the y is on the, on the left. So y plus 1 is equal to e to the 1 third x cubed and I'm going to write times e to the c. This is writing this power which is now a sum as the product of two things with base e. And We talked about this on the last slide. This e to the c is just a constant so instead of writing it in this complicated way as e to the c, let's just write it as c sub 2. So now we have y plus 1 is equal to c sub 2 times e to the 1 third x cubed. And I'll conclude by subtracting 1. And here you have it. Here's our answer to number 4, implementing a lot of the newer ideas that we saw in the last slide. Let's take a look at another example. So now we're on slide number five and we're going to do a review of the reflexive property for logs. We had actually done this in an earlier video back at the beginning of chapter five, but these are skills that are required for the next problem that we're going to do. So I thought it would be good to review. We're asked to evaluate each and in 5a it specifically says three to the log two base three. So you might recall that if we have this situation in which this base here is the same as the base of the log, then the answer ends up being just the number here, the argument of the log, which in this case is 2. You also might recall that from geometry, when we use the reflexive property, it means that something is equal to itself. So I hopefully can convince you of this property by stating that the log of 2 base 3 equals the log of 2 base 3. And if I do a swing right now, starting at 3, I can say that 3 to the log 2 base 3 equals 2. Let's write that out. So you'll notice we have a direct match with what we got doing at the shortcut, now that we know the rule, versus deriving the rule down below in green. So we don't have to go through this each and every time. We can just accept the rule and use it. So let's go to 5b. e to the ln 5. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the problem, writing the implied base. When we're working with natural log, there's an implied base of e. And in doing this, we now have a match with this base here and the base of our log function. So the answer is just going to be the argument, or in this case, 5. 5c says to evaluate e to the 5 thirds ln 8. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the problem with our implied base actually shown. So e to the 5 thirds of the ln of 8 base e. 
Now once again, I've got a pairing between this base here and this base here, except that I'm not allowed to have any constants out in front when I use this rule. So I'm going to have to do one more manipulation, and that is to use the power rule for logs to allow that 5 thirds to become the power of 8. So I'm going to do another rewrite. In doing this, we've got our base of E here, we've got our base of E here, so our answer is just going to be 8 to the 5 thirds. The answer is just the argument itself. Now, there's probably an expectation that you simplify this. Now our denominator of our fractional exponent is going to be the index of our radical. So this is perceived as the cube root of 8, which is 2, and 2 to the 5th is 32. So hopefully a review of this reflexive property for logs has helped you recall the property, and we will use it in the next example. Okay, so we're on our sixth and final slide of this video on separation of variables. And this is the most challenging problem of all. It's going to pull in all of the tricks that we learned in slides one through five in a single problem. Let's take a look. Find the general solution to the differential equation shown. Now the first thing that I observe is that the author of this problem uses y prime instead of dy dx notation, which is what we really like. So I'm going to do a rewrite changing the y prime to dy dx and I'm also going to move the negative 2xy from the left to the right hand side. The next thing that I'm going to do is very basic. I'm just going to cross multiply. Now I'm going to keep my key concept in mind, getting all the y's with dy and all the x's with dx. This is going to require some division on both sides. Now that all the y's are with dy and all the x's are with dx, I'm going to integrate on each side. Now in both cases, on both the left and the right hand side, I've got a situation in which the numerator is precisely the derivative of the denominator. So in both cases, I'm going to use the ln rule. Now you'll notice I just wrote ln of y instead of ln of absolute value y. And we talked about that in an earlier slide, so you might have to rewind or go back to figure out why I eliminated the absolute value. Now let's move to the right hand side, where again, the numerator is precisely the derivative of the denominator. So it's going to be ln once again. Now focusing on the right hand side, we've got absolute value yet again, but this time the argument is 1 plus x squared. And this argument here is always going to be positive, no matter what x is, because when you add 1 to something that's squared, you're guaranteed to have a positive outcome. So in this case, the absolute values are a redundancy, and I'm going to write the problem again without them. Now, on the left-hand side, we have an implied base of E. And now I'm going to swing, starting with that base of E. And when I do that, I get this big problem, e to the ln of 1 plus x squared plus c equals y. Now, in an earlier slide, I talked about the fact that I like to start off with y on the left, not on the right. So I'm just going to flip-flop the left and right-hand side, but I'm going to do something else. I'm also going to take this e expression, and I'm going to write it as the product of two things with base e. And again, we saw that on an earlier slide as well. Now, this e to the c here is just a constant, but it's sort of a cumbersome way to express a constant. So instead of referring to this constant as e to the c, I'm just going to call it c sub 2. It's just a cleaner, easier way to express that constant. So I'm going to do another rewrite. Now, in the very, very last slide that we did, we talked about the reflexive property for logs, which says if this base here matches up with this base here, which is an implied base of E, that the answer to this is just going to be the argument itself. So I can do one final rewrite, which will make our solution very simplistic looking. Y equals C sub 2 times 1 plus X squared. So there's a lot that can happen when you're doing separation of variables, but I think these six slides really illustrate the different pitfalls that might arise when doing this sort of problem.